Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over geosynchronousness and geostationary orbits. And after a quick introduction, then we'll calculate the height above the Earth's surface needed to achieve geosynchronous and geostationary orbits. So here we go. The quick introduction. We have geosynchronous. What does geosynchronous mean? Well, geosynchronous means that it is synchronized to the Earth. Geo-Earth synchronized to the Earth. What is synchronized? What is synchronized is the orbital period of the satellite and the rotational period of the Earth. The orbital period of the satellite is equal to the rotational period of the Earth. That period is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. The times are the same. The time for the Earth to spin, the time for the satellite to orbit the Earth, that occurs in one day, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds, which we often round to 24 hours. So if you have a geosynchronous orbit, when those two things are synchronized, that means that as the Earth spins once on its axis, as it rotates once on its axis, the time it takes for the satellite will also will be the same time. And when the Earth spins once and the satellite orbits once, what that means for a geosynchronous orbit is that the satellite will come back to the same place in the sky every day, every 24 hours, or actually 23 hours, 36 minutes and 4 seconds, or every day. Okay, that's what you get with a geosynchronous orbit. Now, there's a special kind of geosynchronous orbit, which is called geostationary. See, this one's stationary. It's also geosynchronous. The orbital period of the satellite is equal to the rotational period of the Earth. But in this case, for geostationary, we have an orbit that is, goes right around the equator. This occurs only at the equator. You'll notice this orbit is not inclined to the equator. This orbit does not go around the equator. This is inclined to the equator, tilted with respect to the equator. This occurs right above or right at the equator. And that means for geostationary, the Earth goes around once in 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. The satellite orbits the Earth also in 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. And what does that mean? That means that in this case, for geostationary, the satellite stays right above the same place on Earth all the time. If you look up in the sky, the satellite will always be there at the same place. Okay, And this geosynchronous and geostationary, that only occurs at one height above the Earth's surface, and we're going to calculate what height is needed to achieve a geosynchronous orbit. Now, I made this quick summary slide. Okay, Geosynchronous orbit, a geosynchronous satellite has an orbital period that is equal to the rotational period of the Earth. You notice for geostationary, it's the same thing. But for geosynchronous, the, sat the satellite does not stay in the same place above the Earth, but it will come back to the same place in the sky above the Earth every day, all right? But geostationary orbit stays above the same place in the sky with respect to Earth, with respect to a point on Earth. It stays above the same place on Earth, but it only occurs when the orbit is at the equator, okay? And here we go, we're gonna calculate the height. For once again, we have Earth here, we have a satellite here. This often occurs with communicating satellites, but communicating satellites often want to communicate with the same place, the same area on Earth, so they stay right above the same place. Geosynchronous, in this case, it would be kind of a geostationary orbit we're talking about. And we said the orbital period is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds, and we want to know what height is needed to achieve this orbital period. Now, in the previous video, we used this equation to calculate the orbital period with respect to the height. R is the height. Okay, it's actually not the height. It's the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. Okay, so we're going to have to subtract out the radius of the Earth, 6,371 kilometers to figure out what the actual height is, but R is the distance from here to here, from the center of the Earth to the satellites, not just the distance above the Earth. Okay, and we calculated the period for a given height or a given radius. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this equation, rearrange this equation, and solve for R and plug in T, this T specifically. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. If I square both sides, I get t squared is equal to, I get rid of my square root sign, 4 pi squared, 4 times pi squared times r cubed divided by g, the gravitational constant, 
times m, the mass of the Earth. And now what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to take this equation and rearrange it and solve for r cubed first, and then we'll take the cube root, and then we'll have r. So if I rearrange this equation, do some cross multiplying and then dividing, I get that r cubed, the radius cubed, is equal to t, the period, the period squared, which we're going to use this as our period, orbital period, g, the gravitational constant, mass of Earth, divided by 4 times pi squared. Now I'm going to take the cubed root of both sides, and that means that the radius for a given period can be calculated as the cube root of the period squared times g times m divided by 4 pi squared. And all I'm going to do is, we'll do the next slide, I'm going to take this orbital period and plug it in here for the period, and that'll tell me what height will I get in order to achieve, what height will I need in order to achieve that period, which we'll do in the next slide, right? Oh, that's the equation, forgot about that. And there you go. Okay, so this is the equation. We're just gonna plug the values in. We have to convert the time into seconds because the gravitational constant has units of seconds in there. The Newtons has seconds in it. So 23 hours, 56 minutes, four seconds is 86,164 seconds. I'm going to plug that into my equation here, and I get that that's 86,164 seconds squared. Square the second, square the time, square the period. Okay, I ran this thing over here by mistake here, but don't forget that's squared. This is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared, newton meters squared over kilogram squared. I left the units off because space issues here. Then I have the mass of the Earth. M1 is the mass of the Earth. This is the Earth. And that is 5.97 times 10 to 24 kilograms and divided by 4 pi squared. And if I do all of that, I get that the radius, which is the, from the center of the Earth to the satellite, the radius is equal to 4.22 times 10 to the minus, no, times 10 to the seventh meters. Okay, now let's maybe put that in a little bit better units for us. That will give us 42,164 kilometers. Now, that is the radius, as I said, and maybe we want to talk about how high above the Earth's surface. So we're just going to subtract the Earth's radius. The radius of the Earth is 6371, 6,371 kilometers, and that gives us 35,793 kilometers. That is the height needed to achieve this orbital period. If we have this orbital period, then we have a geosynchronous orbit. Okay, and if we put that orbit at the equator, then we'll have a geostationary orbit, and the satellite will always stay above the same place in the sky. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found it helpful. We kind of went over quickly what geosynchronous and geostationary are, and then, of course, we found the height above the Earth's surface needed to achieve that geostationary or geosynchronous orbit. I did I think I wanted to mention too, this, this uh, height right here is equal to um, 22,236 miles, 22,236. Okay, if you found that video helpful, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up, please, for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and then share this video with all of your friends. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you in the next video.